So general election at some point this year, why should people vote for the Scottish Conservatives? Well, it's very clear that we've got uh, a list of priorities that we want to get the focus back on here in Scotland. You know, I've been speaking about uh, making sure the Scottish economy is growing, that we have growth in that economy, supporting businesses, supporting individuals. Uh, later on this week, I'm going to be launching our health paper, focusing on Scotland's NHS. And we are uh, looking in stark contrast to SNP candidates in this election who have said page one, line one of their manifesto will be about independence. So if people want to focus on their real priorities, they can vote for Scottish Conservative MPs to deliver those uh, in the House of Commons, to stand up for their communities okay. and to get the focus away from the SNP's obsession with independence. OK, so in January last year, Rishi Sunak announced his five pledges. So you can see them there. How has he got on? The record's been pretty mixed, hasn't it? Well, these are tough uh, pledges uh, to achieve, and the Prime Minister was very frank about that. There was no point setting easy targets uh, that he would uh, immediately uh, uh, achieve. But obviously, looking at the top one, having inflation, he's more than done that. When the target was set, I think inflation was uh, over 11%. It's now 4.2%. On all of the other issues, we've seen the UK government taking uh, measures to, to tackle uh, these points on here to ensure that we are well, dealing with the big issues. Well, let's, let's pick up on the, the having inflation. He's delivered the, on this, but it's not really his success, is it? It's down to the Bank of England and rising energy prices. Well, we've also seen the action taken by the, the UK government has helped that. And look at the contrast to where we would be if Labour uh, were in power. They are continuing with their pledge to invest £20 billion. So, pounds. so you think that you should will... take credit for this then? Well, well, I think the UK government have taken steps to have inflation okay, but if and if achieved more than that. Energy prices have fallen, I should have said. But, you know, you can't take credit for inflation uh, coming down when it was above 10% when inflation was rising. You know, Rishi Sunak wasn't taking responsibility for that. I, I think there are a range of measures that the UK government have taken to deal with that priority and others looking at growing the economy. Economy, making sure that people have more money in their pockets. We saw that with the autumn statement. I met with the Chancellor yesterday looking ahead to the, the budget in March. There's a lot of opportunities for the okay, UK government to continue to work hard to uh, help people, businesses and communities across the country. Uh, um, growing the economy, well, most economies grow and growth is pretty stagnant, isn't it? Well, and econ a, yeah, economists are saying that the chance of a recession, 50-50 chance of a recession. Well, we're looking at global problems here, but in uh, 2022, the UK had the highest uh, growth in the economy in the G7. So there are really positive signs as well. But more work to be done. I don't think anyone's been complacent within the UK government about that. OK, and on um, getting debt falling, well, debt has actually risen in the past year. Well, we've also seen a huge amount of uh, debt built up during the coronavirus pandemic when the government stepped in to help people secure their jobs, to keep businesses uh, afloat. And we've got to look at how we manage that going forward. OK, well, looking at the um, cut NHS waiting list, we're talking about England here. Well, Rishi Sunak has admitted himself he's failed on that one. Yes, and I'd like to see uh, a similar uh, acceptance from the Scottish government. Hamza Youssef was the health secretary, uh, who, of course... Let's has... just leave the, this. Let's talk well, about Rishi Sunak's target yeah, here. But... He's admitted that he's failed on This is a target he set himself. Let's address that. Yeah, and, and he's been open about that, that he has not uh, seen the reduction in the waiting list uh, that he would like to see. But we are facing huge problems here in Scotland where health is wholly deserved, uh, it was, uh, devolved. It has been uh, within the SNP's competence okay. since they came to power okay. in Okay, I'm going to stop you there because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna concentrate on Rishi Sunak. Well, You're I, not going to divert no, no, I'm, Let's I'm move not, on to stopping yeah, the boats then. Yeah, Let's well, moving on to stopping the boats. The government's plan to send uh, asylum seekers uh, to Rwanda has caused, it's caused huge controversy. It's proved really difficult divisive within the Conservative Party. Um, millions has been spent on this policy and yet one single asylum seeker has yet to arrive in Rwanda. No planes have taken off. Well, of course, the legislation hasn't passed Parliament yet. It's passed... Well, you still to get it through the House it, of Lords. It's passed the House of Commons. It's now with the House of Lords. They can uh, look to make changes or send it back to the House of Commons. But so far, this policy has been a failure. If you look at it in terms of no planes have taken off, it's not working. But, but they can't physically take off yet because we don't have the policy in place. There was obviously uh, the court ruling as well that the government has worked um, since getting that court ruling to bring forward legislation that did pass the House of Commons with a company majority. It's now in the House of Lords. £240 million has been given to the Rwandan government. Is this a good way to spend our money? Well, I want to see any effort taken to stop people making that dangerous illegal crossing from France uh, into England. And do you think and this policy seeing, will work? Well, I think we have seen it uh, being a deterrent elsewhere. There's about 135,000 asylum seekers currently uh, in Rwanda. We've seen other governments around Europe looking at similar plans uh, to try and deter people uh, making that journey. But 
because I think it's really important that uh, these are very vulnerable people making a dangerous crossing and we are already seeing... Well, yeah, as you said, they are very vulnerable people and yet this week Rishi Sunag accepted a, a bet, a £1,000 bet on this issue when he was doing an interview with Piers Morgan. Do you think that's appropriate? Well, I think the, the Prime Minister is defending his policy and he wants to make sure that it works to deter what's the that illegal... Got to do with, what's that got to do with accepting a £1,000 well, bet I, I just to think... get a plane to take off before the general election? Well, the, the Prime Minister is fully supportive of the policy that he's taken forward into the House of Commons that's currently in the House of Lords. But ultimately, the big thing here is the people benefiting from this are the illegal people traffickers okay. who are making hundreds of thousands of pounds and paying on Would you, would you on take a thousand pound people. bet on this issue? Look, I'm not getting into that and I don't think you're offering that either. But what I do think is important is the Prime Minister shows that he is right behind this policy. And if we can stop the boats, if we can prevent me people making that dangerous crossing from France into the United Kingdom, Kingdom, then we will achieve the aims, not just in this priority, but to stop people okay. making a crossing that too many people are losing their lives in. Let's move on from the pledges. Effectively, the man appearing in the ballot paper is going to be Rishi Sunak. Let's talk about him. Why is he so unpopular? Well, this isn't a presidential election. Let's be clear about that. And here in Scotland, you know, we will have a very yeah, different election. Yeah, people are going to go into polling booth or they're going to say yeah. Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak. Yeah, I, I know you don't want to, to speak about Scottish issues, but I think that's really important here as well, because we are looking at an election here in Scotland that's going to be quite different from other parts of the United Kingdom. And here in Scotland, we have a real opportunity to close the door on the SNP's obsession with independence. We know in seats right across the country that either the Conservatives hold those seats at the moment and the SNP are the title challengers, or the SNP have those seats at the moment and the Scottish Conservatives are the title challengers. We can send a real message to the SNP by defeating them in these seats and returning Scottish Conservative MPs okay, that you, we don't want to focus on independence and we do the, want to focus on Scotland's education. Okay, NHS, this is interesting. You don't, education you don't want to talk about Rishi Sunak, I'm do you? Happy to so, about Rishi Sunak. Are you worried about his poll ratings? Proud, and stuff? I'm so proud you, to you want him to come Rishi up Sunak. here and campaign side by side I, with you? I, absolutely, and we'll be doing that during the election. We'll be doing that at our conference in Aberdeen eh, at the beginning of March. So I'm more than happy to do that. But I also want eh, to, you know, make sure okay. there is a adequate focus on the SNP, and who many of these areas that we've spoken about today are wholly devolved to the Scottish Parliament, and they have to be held to account okay. for and their we, record. And we will be speaking to Hamza Yusuf uh, next week as well. So in the last three years. Uh, the last few years, either you've supported three uh, prime ministers. Have they graced the highest office of the land, or are they a hat trick of duds? Well, I'm looking at what Rishi Sunak is doing now, and just look at what he's done since he became prime minister. I'm talking about the, the well, three before then, the two before then. Well, but you, you included all three, and I'm, I'm looking at the, the current prime minister and looking to the future, the prime minister that's taking us into to this election. He's achieved a lot in his time as prime minister. Yeah, look but at one let's of his look first at it. Three prime ministers, five chancellors till since 20. Uh, 19. That's a dysfunctional government, well, isn't it? We've got Jeremy Hunt in number 11 just now. As I said, I met with him earlier on this week, looking at how we can ensure... Five, five chancellors, looking though? At how we can ensure that we can support businesses here in Scotland, like the UK government supporting them across the UK. Remember okay. the 75% business rates relief that businesses in England benefit from hasn't been passed on by the SNP Scottish government. All right, government. do you support... Um, uh, the Chancellor are making income tax cuts in well, the, the budget in March. Uh, I've uh, spoken with the Chancellor. I want to see us making uh, the United Kingdom as competitive as possible. Some of that will be down to tax cuts. Of course, that's very different to here in Scotland, yeah, which is now the I'm highest talking about the March budget here. Would you United welcome Kingdom. tax cuts there? I've, I've had discussions okay, so do you want, you want tax cuts in the, the, the Scottish Parliament as well? I've said I think we should look to get parity with our tax system across the United Kingdom because the problem now is people are being deterred from coming to Scotland to take on really important jobs to work in Scotland because they know they are going to pay okay. more in tax here in Scotland than they would for doing the exact same job south of the border. If you're going to make income tax uh, cuts in Scotland what would you cut well, in back. the Scottish budget because it's you know you'd have to make hard decisions so would it be welfare benefits you would cut? To well it goes back this? to what I was discussing uh, in August last year when we launched our grasping th thistle to to grow the economy uh, report. If we can grow Scotland's economy, if we get more money going into the public services, then we can look to uh, have that um, uh, improved yeah. taxation to make sure people aren't paying more but that in would, tax. But that would for take the time to grow well, the economy. Well, what would you we've cut had now? Opportunities. We've had opportunities to do that. And these are wasted years where the SNP haven't okay. looked to grow Scotland's economy. They haven't looked to support businesses. They haven't looked to uh, support people in work. In fact, they've looked what, to do the opposite. What, they would have you made, okay. they, what would you cut from this year's budget then? Simple well, question. Well, we're looking 
getting a, a number of proposals. There's a stage one debate in the Scottish Parliament uh, on Thursday. We're looking at the National Care Service, for example. A huge white elephant that Nicola Sturgeon took forward, Hamza okay. Youssef has continued with. It is costing hundreds of millions of pounds and it is going to fail. So there's one example. You have six seats to defend in Scotland. What are your realistic ambitions? Well, I, I am uh, looking forward to defending those six seats and putting on more Scottish Conservative MPs in the election this year. And I think we are going to have a good election here so, in Scotland. So how, how many? I'm not I know you're not a betting man, yeah, go on, let I, me I'm let not going to be drawn on numbers, but I think we'll have a good election here in Scotland and I'm looking forward to the campaign. Um, the next Holyrood election is taking place in 2026. What do you think your chances are of becoming the next First Minister? Well, I, again, that's a long way away. I'm looking forward to this election, the next election where the people are going to choose their priorities. And I think up and down the country, it's going to be focused on the real priorities of people across Scotland rather than uh, the SNP's obsession with independence. Do you think you'll ever and, be the First Minister well, of Scotland? I, I, I'm looking to get as many votes and as many seats for the Scottish Conservatives at this election, at the next election, at future elections. And I think it's really important that we have that debate, we have that discussion. So if you lose seats uh, in the, this year's general election, does that make your position untenable? I'm not looking at the Scottish Conservatives losing seats at this general election. I'm looking at the Scottish Conservatives holding what we've got and making gains. So finally, Tories are a long way behind in the polls. What, what's the, what, what, can, what will you do to turn it around well, before I, the next election? I, I think what can people, you do? I think most people have agreed that the, the polls will narrow as, as we get closer to the election and as they start to scrutinise the uh, opposition parties a bit further. You know, the example I gave you earlier, £28 billion pounds Labour are still pledging on, on green energy uh, and, and renewables. Where's that money going to come from? Because it'll either come from borrowing, from increasing, uh, uh, rising inflation, many other cuts and that type okay. of argument has not been held yet. Yes or no, will the Tories win the next election? I'm very hopeful that we'll have another Conservative government. Okay, Douglas Ross, thank you very much indeed for joining us in Scotland tonight. Thank you.